Hey, it's Rob Fitzgerald. Welcome back to another Quick Hit in Lab Medicine. I uh, have about eight slides to give you a basic understanding of interpreting calcium, phosphate, and magnesium, and some of the hormones that control uh, these electrolytes. Um, so calcium has three compartments. Most of it is stored in your bone. That makes sense. You've got a lot of skeletal components of calcium. Um, it's also in self, soft tissue and in the extracellular fluid. And, and in, the, in, in circulation, there's basically three forms of calcium that are important to think about. Um, the free calcium, or what we also call ionized calcium. Um, there's a protein-bound calcium component, and that's primarily bound to albumin. Albumin is negatively charged, so positively charged calcium binds to it. Um, it's also complex to some other small anions. When you measure calcium in the laboratory, most times you're getting a total calcium. And so that's uh, all three of these components. Um, if you're just interested in the physiological form, which is the ionized, you can order an ionized calcium. Oftentimes that's done in, in the setting of blood gases. Um, so ionized calcium is regulated by three different components. Um, some people say a vitamin and two hormones. Um, but you might even look at them all as three hormones because 125-dihydroxy vitamin D is a steroid and, and could be considered a hormone. Anyhow, 125-dihydroxy um, vitamin D and, and PTH are going to increase calcium. And so your parathyroid has receptors. If your ionized calcium is low, um, they're going to sense that and they're going to release PTH and, and PTH is going to work together with 125-dihydroxy vitamin D to increase uh, calcium. Calcitonin generally uh, lowers calcium concentrations. Um, reference range is worth knowing. It's, it's fairly tightly regulated between 8.5 and 10.5. And, um, and again, um, we think about that. Um, in the setting of, of what's going on with your albumin. If you have a low albumin, then your total calcium will be low, and there's formulas that you can use to correct that. Um, but if you really want to know your ionized calcium, it's probably best to measure that directly as, as an ionized calcium. But when we think about interpreting calcium, we also have to think about what is the al patient's albumin uh, status, because uh, that can have a big effect on calcium concentrations. Gets measured in, uh, quite commonly. It's part of the basic metabolic panel. Um, so bone disease, malignancies. You get what's called a hypercalcemia of malignancy, um, sometimes caused by parathyroid hormone-related protein, PTHRP. Um, if you have a disorder in your uh, pituitary, uh, or, I'm sorry, your, your parathyroid gland, either hyper or hypo parathyroidism, uh, reasonably common. Um, and, and a variety of other endocrine disorders. So phosphate, uh, again, is, is mostly stored in bones, similar to calcium. Um, has a fairly narrow uh, reference range, about 2.5 to 4.5. It's used in a variety of uh, high-energy compounds, um, phosphorylations, activate, uh, you know, various intracellular uh, second messengers, et cetera. Um, Oftentimes it's measured with calcium, particularly in renal disease. Uh, in end-stage renal disease, the calcium phosphate uh, product is, is really important uh, to, uh, to have under control. Um, so also in cancer, renal disease, and, some, and infections. Magnesium, um, again, another important component of, of skeletal um, structure. Uh, 1.6 to 2.6 uh, milligrams per deciliter is the reference range, and there really aren't any direct hormonal controls for, for magnesium, um, and uh, oftentimes we uh, measure that in the setting of, of hypocalcemia because if they're hypocalcemic, they're, they're oftentimes hypomagnesemic as well, um, and it's easily, it's easily treatable. Um, so hormones that are important in regulating bone and minerals, parathyroid hormone, how does it work? Um, it primarily acts on the bone, so it's going to increase osteoclast activity so that you break down bone and you release their calcium contents into circulation. Um, it decreases phosphate excretion, uh, decreases phosphate concentrations by increasing excretion, um, which is sort of as opposed to 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3, which does the opposite of that. So, parathyroid hormone actually increases the rate of hydroxylation of 25 hydroxy vitamin D to its active form 
125-dihydroxy vitamin D. Um, it is, as we said, it's you have on your parathyroid hormone, you have calcium sensors, and they are regulated by ionized calcium. So, um, 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3 is a very important, um, you might say, vitamin or hormone. Um, it is also going to increase your calcium concentrations. Um, when we measure vitamin D in the lab, we typically don't measure 125 dihydroxy because it fluctuates. Uh, uh, you know, within hours, and so you can be vitamin D sufficient and have a low, normal, or high 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3. So, so really, if you want to know vitamin D status, we typically measure the precursor of this, which is 25 hydroxy vitamin D, and uh, we measure a D2 and a D3 form, or we measure the total and and and, and read that out. But 25 hydroxy vitamin D is really our best indicator of vitamin D status, although 125 is the active hormone. So vitamin D gets hydroxylated in the liver to form 25-hydroxy, that's the inactive component. Um, in the kidneys, there's a 1-hydroxylase there's a that, that uh, makes the 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, which is the active hormone. Um, so um, as we said, 25-hydroxy is our best indicator of vitamin D status. Really, uh, you only need to measure a 125 if you have some renal disease and you're concerned about the ability to form the, the active metabolite. Um, so it, it works to increase calcium and phosphate by its actions on the gut, so you absorb calcium and phosphate better. Um, it works with PTH to break down bones, um, and it, it also uh, reabsorbs calcium and phosphate uh, renally. Calcitonin, um, not as well understood as PTH and, and, and 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, um, but generally um, it reduces uh, calcium concentrations. It is secreted by the parafollicular cells of the thyroid gland um, and generally reduces both calcium and phosphate. Um, it also stops the breakdown of bone, and so it has been used to treat some bone diseases um, as a drug. Um, it, it does have different effects at different concentrations, so it's not quite as, as clear-cut as PTH and, and vitamin D, but generally it reduces calcium and, and phosphate concentrations. So uh, that's a quick overview of uh, calcium, phosphate, magnesium, and the hormones that uh, help control their concentrations in circulation. Thanks again for tuning in.